What's up you crazy people out there? This is Crazy Raz and welcome to Let's Play Dangan Proper to Happy Havoc. And we are right now going to start our class trial. I have the slightest clue who could it be. This is going to be I think most probably I'll screw up in this one. If you guys found out who it was earlier, oh well, don't say anything. <laughs> so let's get through with it. Anything I can do? Oh, I didn't get anything here, did I? Yeah, I tried talking to a lot of people, but nobody wanted to give something to me. Great. Oh well. Nothing more I can do in this. Oh, God, please help me. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive pun yeah, and yeah, I'll punish everyone be- Okay then. So, let's talk about the murder weapon. First we have to make clear what was delivered, what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Well, it was like, um, you know, like dumbbell. Dum dum. Of course. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. Yeah. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron oh. pipe. No, no, no. Interesting. Oh, man. That Although certainly would make for a powerful weapon. Poor Chihiro. Chihiro's fatal injury. Oops, sorry. It appears it was a head wound. No, 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 no. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. You're wrong. No, that's wrong. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell? found at the scene of the crime it was covered in blood and there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury and the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell as far as I'm concerned there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one you looked at her head wound Yay! that's so creepy so it's what she's like a mortician or something if you don't mind I will proceed from here Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. I'm thinking that's wrong. He doesn't what? Know. For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. No. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? A new element would have happened to non-stop debates. Would like to jump on. Alright, what's that? For this debate, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. The two bullets will disappear as if as if they hit these lines. So think of them as obstacles in your debate. Great! There's a way to keep this white noise from getting in your way. Press right mouse button to attach the silencer, which, will, which you can use to shoot down the white noise. However, if you shoot an actual remark with the silencer instead of the white noise, let me guess, time limit will decrease. So take careful aim and when you have your silencer out. Oh, but if you action difficulty set to gentle, why noise won't appear at all? Actually I don't remember what I put. In which case you can forget about the silencer and just focus on the situation in front of you. Well then good luck and have fun. I don't remember. Alright. The culprit is genocide Jack. I'm sure. Nope. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. 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 The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure of it. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible. Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on. There's just no proof for it. Yes. No, that's wrong. I might know one reason he could be involved. What? 
I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Boob-lust. <laughs> ah, uh, no. It's actually bloodlust. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how the victim was positioned. I got it! Apparently, in every Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You what? what? Hey, okay, wait, hold on a sec. Toko has, like, bloodophobia or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Man, yeah, because why is this got to be so complicated? Because she is a uh, personality. I feel like I understand it. What it means for Jen says that to be Toko, but also not to be Toko. And says that she's not just one person, but multiple people, right? Yep. Uh, what's that supposed to be? Bullshit? No. I... Psychotic? No. This Oops. Well, what is that supposed to be? Uh. Oh, all right. Lucky, actually. Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. They thought that the suspect might have... What did they call it? Dissociative Identity Disorder. Oh, okay. But still, to go and say that about Miss Fukawa is... Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. The one thing that shows Toko has split personality is has to do with the behavior. Her behavior changed. I got it! You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then when she woke up. Oh, is that that body? Are you dead? Yeah, she must have hit her real hard when she made it. The world has a front and a back, a top inning and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. This is quite concerning, I mean, she sounds completely different. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, 
she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? I won't let Genocide Jack have control. I'll drive out the killer, drive out the murderous fiend. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. Uh, how? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised! But I was right I can't about her. I believe you lied! But I still think you have her. only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill yeah, anyone. Ah, the despair. But I don't think But in spite of that promise. I'm sorry, I couldn't keep our promise. Ah. But don't worry, never again. I won't let Genocide Jack have control over me again. You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promise. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that, but you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. But, but your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. <laughs> I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person? Y you don't... Turn to suicide, Jack. Sorry, genocide, Jack. You start a code across the courtroom, but in the next second. Wow, hello there. Is it me you were hoping to see? Oh boy, where did she get a big tongue like that? What the heck? So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. So what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one's fool. <laughs> Intense. Like they say, sound and murderous mind, sound and murderous body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! <laughs> This is the murderous fiend genocide, Jack. This is this, this is this is beyond insane. Um, Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you. I am the mastermind of all masterminds. Just kidding. Then it's not true. Of course it's not true. How? 
dare you try to link me to that creepazoid? And another thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless. I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town. Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again! <laughs> this should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. No, I don't There's think so. clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Yeah, well, but let's assume that. that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Huh? But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe? Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster! I can. Maybe. Maybe she's totally right about that, but something's still bothering me. What she said, I need to get some more details on all this. She stabs. That's how she kills people. Stabs up the dead body. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone! You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. No. No, that's wrong! Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Huh? How's it? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. This is no creation of mine. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. I remember one difference. There's one clear difference between the numbers. Okay. In the photos from the Genocide Jack cases, look at the neck and the stomach. Here you see a clear difference. The fatal injury. I got it! For one, the cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, yes. That is remarkably different from the other murder. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right! In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Could you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? Yeah, I'm getting crazy. So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? That's right, the second difference is how she was suspended. In the photos, the other genocide jack cases, all the other victims were stabbed through their hands. Here you can see a clear difference. What was used to suspend her? I got it! Do you remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. The scissors. Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And guess what? I use my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very 
picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac? Are you referring to me? Listen up, Big Mac. There's actually one more difference. Okay, huh? what's that? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who yeah. the victims were in each genocide that jack cake. There's a Talk pattern me. there, just waiting to be discovered. All men. A pattern. Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Hmm, let's see. There's a pattern of some of these genocide cake jack victims. It's a hero didn't fit in, because they were all guys. If you look at the names of every victim, what you'll notice is, I think I figured it out why she couldn't uh, have killed Chihiro because Chihiro was a girl. Oh my God. Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Bingo! Bullseye well right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. Get hard, uh, 32. Oh, I'm gonna say this all again. <laughs> they were all. Guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little men! <laughs> I can't believe I said it! I'm so embarrassed! The hell is wrong with you? I can't help it! I'm just a full throttle boy on boy fangirl! And the mopey side of me just hates it! But now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full fledged fan madam! So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill her? Wouldn't Chefs suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of the one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely. When you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lowly cur! Lowly cur? I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! That does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe you used the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school? Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high class envy of the entire world scissors! Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? <laughs> She's fully equipped! That's right! So I can kill anywhere, anytime! Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong! You can't, can you? Gutter dogs, all of you! Not to mention, I have no clue how to tie a good knot! <laughs> so rope's totally out of the question anyway! <laughs> I have no idea what's going on anymore! Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? But... The body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal, and not some copycat killer or whatever. Actually, hold on. There is one person. One person who could copy Jensen Jack cases. There you go. I hope I'm not wrong. Here's my answer! Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you'd already looked through the Genocide Jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? No, I don't think so. Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all?! Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Byakuya, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask. When would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. 
Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. And the locker rooms, they're suspicious, very suspicious in here, wouldn't you agree? Suspicious? Seems nobody says the locker rooms, let's start with the girls' locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a god... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girl... Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. There's a clear contradiction what Baikyo has just said. How did he know it was Chihiro? Alright, what is it? Add some called a tooth flashback. Alright. If you aim at a weak spot and hold down the left mouth button, then you'll memorize that weak spot. Oh, okay. This phrase can be only shot once as a single tooth bullet. So if you shoot and change the tooth bullet, it will disappear from your tooth cylinder. However, you can use this flashback feature as many times as you want. If you don't seem to be uh, have an answer uh, to a lie or contradiction, you might be wise to memorize a different weak spot and use that to make any case. So, best time for a flashback? Well, you just don't have to use a king witch, would you? Alright. I think this bug won't be feeling anything. Anyway, good luck and have fun. Alright, here we go. No, that's not it. So, you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... how? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room... <gasps> you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So of course I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? I wish you'd taken me with you. Mm, I should have shot that one. So, you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... How? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room... <gasps> you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro. Who... No, that's wrong. Oh. I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. So your claim that you went to the girl's locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. What's wrong with Biakia's attitude? It's like he doesn't even care. I got him cornered, but he acted like he has nothing to do What's with it. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? The difference between this case and other Genocide Jack murders. The evidence of Biakia is responsible is hidden in there. What evidence could it be? That is close to the library? The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But Chihiro was suspended with... It was some kind of rope. Was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya. Where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. No, that's wrong! 
Okay, this is getting crazy. Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Byakuya, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time? went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Oh, that is is that about right? He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned. As if he's not been involved. Wait, not even involved. What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Okay, this is getting weird. Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win! Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still, there's something that's still bothering you. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait, what was that just now? Something's not right. Chihiro's body is definitely found in a girl's locker room, but does that mean you can really accept Bioke said was the truth? No, you cannot. There's definitely something about off he said. Scene of the crime. I got it! You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well... I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. Alright guys, <laughs> I'm sorry to stop like this, but I thought I'll take this to the next video. So if you like it, please put a like and subscribe. And see you in the next video. Ciao.